the mad lad himself, Troy Weaver, gave everybody a 24-hour head start to dig his grave, and then he bursts out of it and says, ha, just kidding, I'm actually a genius. Jalen well, Duran is a piston. Jalen Duran is a piston, and I love this. I am actually a big fan of Jalen Duran, and I don't want to join uh, in on the Imani Bay type train, but I... I don't – back when people thought Imani Bates was still the sweetness and the next no, coming. He's not. I'm liar. talking about, of course, False before profit. he ever went to college, before he even committed to MSU. Oh, um, before he was a I, traitor. <laughs> I had said that, listen, I'm telling you guys, this Jalen Duran kid is the best kid coming out of high school. Like, he is absolutely sweet. And I'm telling you, he's better than Imani Bates. And – now, just Lo and behold. <laughs> a, a short year and a half later, he's a Detroit Piston at number 13, which was not a pick that we had. Now, Troy Weaver, and this is where I talk about value, um, he absolutely pulled kind of a coup here. Uh, he took Kemba Walker from the Knicks. They didn't want him. They wanted to offload his not large salary. I think it was $9 million. I I think that's Something what like was that. reported. If I'm mistaken, yeah. I apologize. Uh, but they wanted to offload his salary. And then Detroit, when they traded Jeremy Grant, part of that package, we got a couple second-round picks. And then we got Milwaukee's 2025 first-round pick. So to put this in Which we all agreed property, was a terrible pick at the time. It didn't seem like trade. a lot of value. Well, but we also... We also expected there to be more. In fairness, all of us. You said, did. Wait. I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't. I didn't at all. Uh, I was well, like, God, well, this I seems thought there so would be more desperate. because, again, in a vacuum, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I'm thinking, listen, they're going to try to do some stuff salary wise. They have other plans here. Like, this isn't the only move. This is clearly a precursor to more, although we don't, there's still more to come from it, probably. Given sure. The true. Right? I just thought it was only a free agent thing. I thought this was an eight and only move. That's lit. And to which, be fair, I'm not alone. Horrified mo, mo, me if it was the case. But we're, we're not going to do you. the free agency <laughs> cast yet. That's going to be coming true, up. True, true, so true. we're, we're going <laughs> to stick to the draft. So that to put that into context, we're talking about a first round pick, Milwaukee's first round pick in three years. So quite a bit down the road. And given what Milwaukee too. is, unless things just fall apart and Giannis gets traded or something crazy, That's you expect that happen. pick to be very late first round. You expect it to be yeah. in the late 20s, if not even 30, if they, if they were to win the title that year, of course. So yeah. it's, it's what we're considering a late first round pick in three years. So it does not have a ton of value right now. So he got that in the trade. He shipped that to the Knicks, and he took the Kemba Walker deal. And we thought... That's what they gave up for Duran. It does appear that the Pistons also are giving New York a 2023 first round pick, but it's protected one through 18. It is protected again in 24, one oh. through 18. Then in 2025, it's protected one through 13. It, it, it's protected for a long time. And it's if just for one whatever reason, if we suck forever in 2028, it turns into a second round pick. Of any kind, like it's it's a very weird. Um, that eighteen spot a, is good. That eighteen spot is a prime spot. They're going to get a first ooh, round pick from us eventually. It, it might be probably like, twenty four. I think twenty twenty four. Twenty four, like maybe we have like the sixteenth pick or something like that could be it. Um, and then it's less protected as it goes on. So eventually, we're yeah. going to give up a, another first round pick to the Knicks. God yeah. knows when it is, but this was to get the thirteenth overall pick. And so with that, select Jalen Duran, a player that I think is a very good value. He's very young, and he has a ton of upside. I, I don't – I we have not talked – me and you have not talked a lot about Jalen Duran because, let's be honest, we didn't know where the Pistons were going to be picking other than number five. There were a lot of rumblings that the Pistons were going to look to make moves, but we didn't know if they'd end up with another lottery pick, a mid-first-round pick, a late-first-round pick. So yeah. we didn't – talk about this scenario a lot what is no. your observations on Duran? i just love bringing in that type of size with the players that you already have i i think that this I, and i don't even think that it, with everything we've already established about your opinion of ivy i think this enhances that pick a ton and also it just it, giving someone of that size for kate to work with in high screen and roll situations and as help on defense, it just 
just as a as a kind of a dominant post player, kind of a kind of a very different uh, vibe from a post player compared to what Isaiah Stewart is. Isaiah Stewart is very much of the same, you know, built from the same brick as Ben Wallace was, whereas Jalen Duran does have some shades of Rashid more so. And so that type of dynamic between the two of them is awesome. It does bring into question, like, really, is DeAndre Ayton on the table anymore? I mean, you have a front court now, a full front court. I mean, I don't think necessarily Isaiah Stewart's a 30-minute guy, but I don't know. Maybe you do bring in Ayton, and then you have a rotation of all these trees and bruisers. I, I think it's brilliant. I, I like it, it enhanced the Ivy move. I already thought the Ivy move kind of kind of knocked it out of the park, but now I am seriously thinking that maybe the Pistons have had the best off season this year and will continue to do so. To where there are going to be national pundits who are like, "This Pistons team in a year or two is going to be contending for the East." Like that's how that's how good this makes me feel. Right? I'm a kid and you know I be on the way. Yeah.